Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. Pleased to meet you, hope you get my day, oh yeah, but what's puzzling you is the nature of my day, oh yeah, get down in it. Drug, sex, rock and roll, and Islamic terror, welcome back to the United States of America after it was destroyed by Allen Ginsberg, Timothy Leary, and the other fellow travelers of the left who have spawned the seeds of our death. Now, I'm going to give you stuff today that I've given you before, but maybe now you will listen. Maybe you idiot liberals in Manhattan will finally open your ears to reality instead of calling me names, instead of castigating Michael Savage as some right-wing evildoer. You may come to understand, as you see your loved ones in morgues, or in the hospital while a piece of human trash that did it is laughing in Bellevue Hospital. Maybe you foolish liberals will open up your eyes to the fact that you are digging your own graves. They're laughing at you, you fools. You see the men, the quote men up there in New York, giving their press conference with their hands in front of their, their bellies, standing there like the stooges that they are. The fools with Mayor de Blasio, the phony, standing there, all standing there looking like uh, morticians with nothing to say. All... Sweeping it under the rug, what they just did. Now, I have a report. Instead of talking in generics, I'll be very specific for you. I'll be real specific for you today. I have a secret report that was put together by the NYPD a number of years ago that shows that liberals are fellow travelers with Islamic terrorists. I will also show you definitively that Muslim lawyers have penetrated the civil liberties unions and many other intelligence agencies in this nation. I will prove it to you. This is not just hot air or rhetoric. And I will tell you right now, once again, this is the worst terrorist attack in New York City since 9-11. And if you stupid party-going liberals of New York want to commit suicide, well, go ahead. But don't tell me I didn't warn you. And don't tell me I didn't tell you how to stop the next Muslim from killing you. I know I said the word I'm not supposed to say, but I'll say it until you finally hear it, until it comes out of your stupid ears. You've been so brainwashed, the only way to unwash your brain is by washing it out with soap. Let's go back, and let's start at the beginning. There's a New York Times story from April 15, 2014, headlined as follows, written by Matt Apuzo and Joseph Goldstein. And the title of the article is this, New York Drops Unit That Spied on Muslims. Now, the reason I was able to find this story is because I actually was one of the only commentators in America who learned of the NYPD unit, a secretive unit, by the way, that sent plainclothes detectives into Muslim neighborhoods, and the cops eavesdropped on conversations and built detailed files on where these Muslims ate, prayed, and shopped. And yet the program was shut down by William J. Bratton. That's right. William J. Bratton, the department's commissioner at the time, backed the department away from some of the post-9-11 intelligence gathering practices of his predecessor. Now, where is William J. Bratton today? Is he working for Donald Trump? Where did Bratton go? Robert, check it out. Where is old Bratton today? Now, why did William Bratton and the mayor of that time and Obama at that time and the liberal fellow travelers, the snakes, the devils, why did they sue the NYPD? Why did so-called civil rights groups? And why did a so-called senior official with the FBI work to undo this New York unit that spied on Muslims? I'll let you figure out the answer to that one as quickly as you can. To many Muslims, they say the squad, known as the Demographics Unit, was a sign that the police viewed their every action with suspicion. Uh, duh! You see, the, U the U.S., uh, the New York police mapped communities inside and outside New York City. That would have included Patterson, New Jersey, why the, where this piece of subhuman trash resided with his wife and children, who, by the way, I would deport. 
I'd throw them out of the country. Don't you tell me that the wife's not poisoned. Don't tell me that children aren't little jihadis waiting to run your daughter over when they grow up and can drive a car. Don't tell me that. But the uh, FBI had a fellow traveler in there. The police department had fellow travelers in there. The mayor's unit had fellow travelers in there. William J. Bratton was a fellow traveler. So he undid this incredible unit that stopped terror in its tracks. Linda Sarsour, you ever hear of her? You know who she is? The Palestinian-American who runs the Arab American Association of New York? I'll let you figure out what I think should be done with the Arab American Association of New York, but I'll leave that for another show. Linda Sarsour, all-around troublemaker, said this at the time. The demographics unit created psychological warfare in our community, said Linda Sarsour, of the Arab American Association of New York. Those documents, they showed where we live. That's the cafe where I eat. That's where I pray. That's where I buy my groceries. They were able to see their entire lives on those maps, and it completely messed with the psyche of our community. Yes, Linda, it was supposed to mess with the psyche of the terrorist, Linda. Ms. Sarsour was one of several advocates who met last Wednesday with Mr. William J. Bratton and some of his senior NYPD staff at police headquarters. She and others in attendance said the department's new intelligence chief, John Miller, who is still there, by the way, told them that the police did not need to work covertly to find out where Muslims gather and indicated the department was shutting down a unit. Now, who created this great demographic unit that was stopping terrorism before it occurred? I have the answer to that, too, and I'll get to that. They were the ones who would chat up the employees at Muslim-owned businesses, they would gauge sentiment about America and foreign policy. And by using maps and photographs, the police noted where Albanian men played chess in the afternoon, where Egyptians watched soccer, and where South Asians, so-called, played cricket. That's what the police were doing. It was called intelligent, preventive police work. But you see, the New York Civil Liberties Union had a man named Mr. Stolar. Does the name ring a bell? Martin Stolar, the civil rights lawyer. Martin Stolar, a red diaper doper baby from the get-go, in my opinion, was one of the first lawyers who brought a claim against the NYPD. And he said that the post-9-11 surveillance programs violate the court order in that case. Joining the Muslim community, Mr. Stolar worked with the Muslim community to undo this amazing surveillance program. But who else is responsible? Why, it's none other than that tall, phony Mr. de Blasio. Mr. de Blasio said in a statement at the time that the closing of the NYPD unit was, quote, a critical step forward in easing tensions between the police and the communities they serve so that our cops and our citizens can help one another Go after the real bad guys. They ought to go after you, de Blasio. They should have gone after you the day you were inaugurated. You are the worst curse that ever hit New York City. You are standing up there today like you care about Muslim terrorism? I don't think so, de Blasio. So we have a demographics unit that was turned closed down. I have the original paperwork from that unit. And we found out that the lawyer, Martin Stolar, of the Americans, the New York Civil Liberties Union, a red diaper doper baby through and through, and, and according to my reading of it, and Linda Sarsour, a Palestinian troublemaker from the get-go, in my opinion, wherever there's an anti-Jewish march, wherever there's an anti-American march, wherever there's a pro-Islamic march, there's Linda Sarsour out front. There's nothing we could do. We're going to sit here and wring our hands while they're laughing at us, while that piece of human trash who ran those people over yesterday is laughing in Bellevue Hospital, celebrating what he did, that piece of garbage. And you're sitting here telling me he has civil rights, and he was treated in Bellevue Hospital the same way uh, a president or a mayor, God forbid, would, would be treated by the best medicine in the world. I wouldn't have given him that treatment. But then I'm not in charge of anything. I'm only a talk show, so I really shouldn't get that excited. Not only am I only a talk show host, 
I'm not even an unknown talk show host. I only have 20 million listeners according to the recent, the recent data, which shows streaming data, radio data, radio station data, websites, Twitter, Facebook. But what does 20 million people amount, amount to when you have Wolf Blitzer? When you have that other one, I can't even mention his name today. I'm, I'm almost near apoplexy with anger. What's that other one? The Pecker, Woodpecker. Jake Woodpecker, Jake Tapper, you're not going to believe what this fellow traveler You'll never believe what Jake Tapper said last night. How many years have I been telling you these people are not mentally ill, in my estimation? They're far worse than mentally ill. Now, there's a phrase that was originated for people like Jake Tapper and Wolf Blitzer during the Holocaust. I'm not going to use that phrase right now, but I'm going to ask people who are listening to this show who are of Jewish heritage, who either lost relatives in the Holocaust or knows who the Jewish collaborators, what the Jewish collaborators were called, those who collaborated with the Nazis in the death camps. Do you know what that name is? That's what I'm going to apply to people in the media of Jewish heritage who constantly apologize every time there's an Islamic attack in this country. And I'm going to start with this for one reason only, because they're the most sensitive in the media. They're going to hide behind calling me a racist. They're going to hide behind calling me every name under the sun, and I'm ready for it. And by the way, I have a few other things for you. And it's too early for me to give it all to you. And the phone number here is 855-400-7282. And the show is called The Savage Nation. And the two hearts in my chest are beating very loudly right now, and I've only just begun. So I ask you to stay tuned for the next couple of hours if you can, because everything will be given, everything that I have will be given to you, including the details of the NYPD surveillance unit that could have stopped this human trash from doing what he did. They would have caught that piece of garbage and flushed him down the toilet a long time ago. I'll pause right now. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. We also have to come up with punishment that's far quicker and far greater than the punishment these animals are getting right now. Amen. They'll go through right court on. for years. At the end, there'll be who knows what happens. Good for we you. We need quick justice. Right. And we need strong justice. Right. Much quicker and much stronger. Right on. Than we have right now. Because what we have right now is a joke and it's a laughing stock. And no wonder so much of this stuff takes place. And I think I can speak for plenty of other countries, too, that are in the same situation. I hope that Donald Trump gets a little piece of this show sent to him by his able staff. And he says Savage was talking about the NYPD anti-terrorism program that worked like a charm because they were surveilling Muslims in and around New York City. And it was stopped by William J. Bratton. It was stopped by Mayor de Blasio. It was stopped by Barack Obama. It was stopped by Linda Sarsour. It was stopped by Mr. Stolar of the New York Civil Liberties Union, Mr. Trump. And you can restore this unit not only in New York City, but in every city in this country. And you can tell the civil liberties lawyers whatever you want to tell them. But you tell those civil liberties lawyers that if they collaborate with terrorists, either overtly or covertly, they will face the full resources of the federal government. I have the New York Police Department program that clearly shows collusion between the civil liberties groups and the terrorists. I promised that on my website, michaelsavage.com. I promised it on my Twitter feed, at a savage nation. Now, before that, I posted the following statement. Look at the garbage coming into our nation. They kill us, and psycho libs apologize for their murder sprees. Close the borders. Now, most people agree with me. Some of them are stupid appeasers, brainwashed children who went to uh, colleges here and were told we're picking on Muslims. 
Well, then ask the Muslims who were killed by the fanatical Muslims if we're picking on Muslims. Ask the Israelis if we're picking on Muslims. Ask the Russians if we're picking on Muslims. Ask the Hindus if we're picking on Muslims. Ask the Buddhists if we're picking on Muslims. You people are so stupid that you have put your political ideology ahead of your own survival. In that sense, you are suicidal. And I will not listen to suicidal people directing my policies in this nation anymore. I've had enough of it, and I hope you had enough of it. This piece of garbage was radicalized right here in America in one of his mosques. What, he picked it up on the Internet? Yeah, that's what we're hearing from de Blasio. He picked it up on the Internet. No, he didn't pick it up on the Internet. <clears throat> Have you gone in and listened to the mumbo-jumbo in some of these radical mosques? What do they say? They love America? Have you looked into some of the mosques, de Blasio, before you opened your big double-talking mouth? Trump can save us, and we've got to help Trump save us. We got to restore the NYPD unit as quickly as possible. Now, before I go on with more news on this subject, I'm going to read you a piece from this secretive report that is now gone. It was purged by the America, the uh, New York Civil Liberties Union. I have the report: radicalization in the West, the homegrown threat. Copyright 2007, New York City Police Department. All rights reserved. Prepared by Mitchell D. Silber, Arvin Bat. Senior Intelligence Analyst, NYP, the Intelligence Division. I linked to this three books ago. You see, my books are a serial. They're not really separate from each other. I referenced this book in Scorched Earth. I, I this report in, in my book, Scorched Earth. Scorched Earth, Restoring the Country After Obama. Then came other books, which were like a continuation of this long attempt to awaken America before it is too late. Trump's war followed that one. I thought we could save America with Donald Trump. But I warned you that the fellow travelers in this country, I warned you that the deep state, the liberals, the Republicans would undermine our agenda. Remember, Trump is not the issue. Our agenda of borders, language, culture, the American way, that's the issue. And when they attack Trump for things he has not done, blaming him for everything from hurricanes to Martians landing in Patterson, New Jersey, they are insane. Liberalism is a mental disorder. Jake Tapper is a what? Who's answering that question? What would the people have called a Jake Tapper during World War II? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. I don't know if I can give it to you because it's so well written about the terrorist attacks and how they were thwarted by the NYPD until de Blasio came along and in cahoots with the New York Civil Liberties Union and uh, Arab American and other Muslim fellow travelers. This program of the NYPD, the best in the country, which stopped terrorists before they acted using their priority list of demographic analysis to stop the attacks before they occurred. But this uh, report is worth looking at in detail. I cannot give you the whole detail about radicalization in the West, pre-radicalization, self-identification, indoctrination, jihadization. I can't give that to you. I can just summarize it. We know about all the attacks that they have conducted in the name of Allah. And I know about all of the sensitivities out there taught by the law schools about uh, the Fourth Amendment, due process. I know it because I grew up with liberals. I know how liberals think. I know they're suicidal. At the, at the end of the day, they're suicidal. Look at their lifestyles. And what's their statement? That, what's the statement libs used to make? I used to hear it all the time. I couldn't believe that they would say a thing like that. I would hear the self-righteous New York liberals say, I'd rather see 99 guilty people go free then one innocent man be arrested. Right, Bernie? Bernie Sanders? I'd rather see 99 guilty people go free than one innocent Muslim arrested. 
Would you now? I'd rather see 99 innocent people detained to prevent that one person from running people over in New York City, Bernie. Lori on WBOB in Jacksonville. Go ahead. You're on the Savage Nation. Hi there. Um, my comment is about the New York Muslim surveillance program that was reined in. And if this program was a blanket surveillance of all persons and houses of Muslims, I concur with it being reined in. But as for recording the language in the mosques and using it for probable cause under Article 4, I would concur with that. And I would also add to you that under um, Article 1, Section 9, they can detain these people without a writ of habeas corpus because it can be suspended in cases of rebellion, invasion, and public safety. So, well, you, you have the you have the law pretty clear. Are you a lawyer, Lori? No. But well, you seem you seem to be a very very. No. How do you how do you know all of these fine details? In the Declaration of Independence, because it's easy enough for us peasants to understand. And the law <laughs> is what goes for you. For me. Oh, you mean the people that Wolf Blitz is sneers at, the people that Hillary Clinton calls the deplorables? That's you, Lori. Do you know that? No, I'm not a deplorable, and I don't care what what the media says. It's all about... Well, all I can say is you're a great caller. You're very intelligent. I'm sending you a copy of my God book, only if you can tell me the title of it. What is the title of my book out next week? God, Law, and something like that. No, okay. I'm going to do it once today, God, Faith, and Reason. Yeah. There because we... I want to show you you can have faith in God and still have reason. That's a, That's a paradox that most people who are utter rationalists can't accept. And incidentally, since I'm talking about God, what is it that this murderer in New York City said as he ran the people over and was aiming for the school bus with disabled children on it? Did you know he wanted to kill those poor little children on the school bus? This piece of human trash who's laughing in the hospital getting halal meals? Do you know that this piece of garbage is being treated in Bellevue Hospital with the same treatment that the president of the United States would be given? That's how sick our country is? And he's being given a religious meal because it would violate his religious rights to eat the same trash that everybody else eats in the hospital. He's laughing at us because he knows we're weak and stupid. He knows we're so weak and stupid that we would let a man like him into the country to begin with, not arrest him even though he had been interviewed in 2015 by the FBI. Did you hear? Oh, you didn't know that? Did you know the suspected New York City attack to Safulo Sapov? was interviewed by the FBI in 2015, but the agents did not have enough evidence to open a case on him. Are you listening to this? Enough evidence. Enough evidence. Enough evidence. Thanks to the fellow travelers called lawyers, we will never, ever have enough evidence until they kill people. And even after they kill people, I can guarantee you the Civil Liberties Union is sniffing around in Bellevue Hospital to make sure he's getting halal meals to make sure he's being treated right, to make sure no one's looking at him the wrong way, to make sure he's got a prayer book, to make sure he's got a good, safe day in that hospital. And by the way, what did he say when he killed, after he was uh, shot by the cop? He said, Allah Akbar. Now, I'm going to ask you something. If he prays to a God called Allah, who taught him to kill, and he thanks God because God is great, his God is great, because he was able to kill, can you honestly say that that reference to Allah is the same as the God we pray to? No, therefore, Allah is not the same God as ours. And I am not Winston Churchill. By definition, any man who prays to a God that says it's okay to kill innocents is not praying to my God, not praying to your God. Therefore, he's not praying to the God of salvation. He's praying to some entity and some deity that we cannot even understand. It's a death cult. That, he, that he's in. The man is in a death cult. Why would you want to bring people in who practice a, a death cult? Tell me. I think we have a winner to my question. Joe on WABC, just give us the answer in one word first. Judenrat. What did you, Judenrat mean, Joe? Well, it was the ones that collaborated, like in Schindler's List, the one that wore the gold stars and beat up their fellow religious people in the ghettos in Warsaw. The ones. Do you do you believe that such individuals are operational in America today? Oh, absolutely. All you got to do is put CNN on any single day and watch Wolf and watch Jake. 
And I love the way yesterday in New York City, when it was first getting reported before it went national, that it was a road rage incident where it was somebody cut off. I know. I had. I was on live in New York for one hour. Then I got uh, uh, whatever, whatever. They had to use a local news staff. I had a man on the ground, but nevertheless, people do what they have to do. I covered that story. I said they're calling it road rage, but what did I say within two minutes of it happening? I said it has all the earmarks of terrorism. I'm going out on the line. This is radical Islamic terrorism. And I prayed I was correct because I would have lost my position in radio if I had been wrong, Joe. But I was right. You know how I was right? Because I can add up two and two pretty quickly. Because I learned if you can't add two and two, you're going to wind up thrown in the gutter or have your throat cut by one of these invaders. Joe, thanks. Stay in the line. I'm sending you God, faith, and reason. 855-407-282. Scott on WDRC. Go ahead. You're on the Savage Nation. Yes. Hello, Dr. Savage. Muslims are being horribly maligned and slandered by American media, and as a result, there is a frenzy of anti-Muslim bigotry and hatred in the United States. The Muslims do not pose a major threat to the United States. On the contrary, the real threat to the United States comes from international Jewry. The Jews control all... All right, Nazi, Nazi, drop dead Nazi. Nazi, 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 you're not welcome here. Nazi, why don't you just join... CNN is a special counselor. Take one view. Why is it that all your view is the Jewish view? Why is it that you are a Nazi? Who poisoned your mind? Who was it who made you think that all Jews are evil? I woke up a few when I read the protocols of the learned elders of Zion. and I That was invented by your grandfather, a dirty piece of white trash who's now dead. Henry Ford was a genius. That was invented by one of your white trash associates, one of your fat, white, trash, associate, impotent, bum Nazis who salute Hitler. No. It was not written by Jews. You know that. Ford knew that the Jews... Now, what, what do you guys do after you get through raping little boys in your little Nazi cell? What else do you do there? What I know is that the... Ah, oh, drop dead. Drop dead. Throw yourself into a gas oven. Go home and put your face in an oven and turn the gas on and don't light the pilot. You know how to do that? I don't know if the Nazi manuals teach you how to do that. Just open the oven, turn it on, and don't light the pilot. Do us all a favor. So now you heard it on the show from a Nazi who says that the Muslims are not a problem, it's the Jews. So there's another group that are fellow travelers in America. Radical left, radical right, and Muslims all joining together in a nice hoedown to destroy all of us. Joe on WABC, what's on your mind, Joe? Michael, uh, I'm Italian-American I wanted to talk about the surveillance. Uh, you know, in my neighborhood where I grew up in Brooklyn, we were surveilled all day long, the Italian Americans, to get the gangsters, the new mobsters, and it worked. That's how they got them. Oh, they oh you mean when the, FB, when the NYPD and uh, the anti gang force under Rudy Giuliani or before then? Well, Rudy Giuliani and a little bit before, the FBI was also involved. They were all over in the neighborhood, whether it was a restaurant, a social club. Uh, I lived next to them, so they would be on my block. They would be outside. Uh, and everybody knew that the, the, the mobsters knew themselves they were being surveilled. All right, so and in other words, there was racial profiling of Italian-Americans in order to catch the rotten apples in the barrel. Is that what you're saying? Absolutely. And where, where was the ACLU at that time, or, or the NY Civil Liberties Union? Where, was, where were they then? Well, the problem was the Italian-Americans didn't care. The good, hard-working Italian-Americans, it didn't bother us. We wanted Oh, well, why do the good Muslims care then? Well, they should. They're not outspoken. Maybe it's fear, because there's always some fear. We had some fear back in the day also. We didn't want to say, you don't want to speak out. But we didn't say anything, but we knew what was going on. And we didn't Unbelievable. With it. No, Joe, I, I love a caller like you because you speak, you know, like a real person. You're like a guy in a bakery or an, an Italian deli that I could talk to. And it's exactly what we're talking about here. Somehow the average Italian didn't mind that their neighborhood was being looked at by the FBI to catch the criminals. They knew they weren't criminals. So they were glad that the FBI was there. Why do we hear the outcry then from the so-called peaceful Muslim community? What are they so concerned about? I, I wish we did because you know what? It would change everything. It would change That's right. We need a new surveillance unit. We need a demographic unit. We need the NYPD to brush off the report I have in my hand, and I need to send it to Donald Trump. And if Donald Trump is listening, if you don't have this NYPD uh, program in your hand, I'll get it to you. Have one of your staff assistants email me. I will forward you this report, which is no longer found anywhere on the Internet. 
I grabbed it before it was purged by the uh, New York Civil Liberties Union. I grabbed it. I was going to publish it in a book, but I didn't get around to it. Okay, Joe, you know that I'm on the verge of publishing a book, and it's keeping me up late at night because in this time of terror, it's very hard to have faith in God. People want something more than God. But tell you what, this makes me reach out in my faith for God even more. It's times like these that a man finds his faith and finds God. You don't need God when you don't need God, but you need God when you need God. I'm sending you God faith and reason. And I'll show you what I've been struggling with for the last 40 years. So I can go down the list and I can find more of these things for you from the report. And it's about the Muslim threat to America. At the time, it was a great report. It was about the jihadist ideology that was uh, being picked up by the Salafi-based NGOs in extremist sermons, in Salafi literature, in jihadi videotapes, in extremist sponsored trips to radical madrasas, militant training camps abroad, where young susceptible Muslims, especially those living in the West, are found. And it was all in this report of how they were going about stopping the Muslims from becoming radicalized or going to the next step of killing, running people over. And as I speak with you, the subhuman who ran those people over, the subhuman, look at his face, the inbreed. Take a look at the inbreed's face. Look at him. He's in the hospital laughing about what he did, celebrating, enjoying an ethnic meal, praying to his Allah that he did a good deed. And you don't see the connection between the religion and the act? Are you people crazy? Are you that stupid to disconnect his religious beliefs from what he did? How many years can you keep apologizing for what is in the holy book that too many of these subhumans take literally? Ask any of the soldiers who lost legs or arms. Ask any of the soldiers who've come back from Iraq, Afghanistan, or Syria what these animals are really like. Don't ask the liberals in the media. Don't ask the propagandists who make the movies showing you as the American troop is the enemy. Ask the soldiers who were over there and dealt with these animals. Then you'll understand what we're going to deal with here more and more and more until we get so tough that either they don't come here or we don't let them come in here and we start deporting those who are here, who are on the lists, who have been communicating with others who will do us harm, throw them right out of the country. And if no one wants them, I have a solution to that problem as well. Right here on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. We'll return to our analysis of what must be done to stop the next Islamic attack in America. But first, an important word from LifeLock. And it's true that uh, it's about the recent credit bureau breach. Everyone's asking, should I freeze my credit? Well, unfortunately, this step alone won't protect you against every identity fraud threat arising from this data breach. Hackers got access to social security numbers, birth dates, and an unspecified amount of driver's license numbers. They can use this type of personal info to commit crimes in your name and even steal from your 401k. I want you to get your protection now. Sign up for LifeLock now. They use proprietary technology to detect a wide range of identity threats, and they will alert you if your information is being used. And if there's a problem, one of their agents will work to fix it. No one can prevent all identity theft or monitor all transactions at all businesses. But LifeLock can help you see more than if you're just monitoring your credit. So go to LifeLock.com or call 1-800-LIFELOCK. Use promo code SAVAGE. That's SAVAGE for 10% off your LifeLock membership. Visit LifeLock.com and save 10% now. The New York Police Department Radicalization in the West Profiling Report, which stopped the, the Muslim terror attacks, is very important, and it says the following. The NYPD understands that it is a tiny minority of Muslims who subscribe to Al-Qaeda's ideology of war and terror, and that the NYPD's focus on Al-Qaeda-inspired terrorism should not be mistaken 
for any implicit or explicit justification for racial, religious, or ethnic profiling. Rather, the Muslim community in New York City is our ally and has as much to lose, if not more, than other New Yorkers if individuals commit acts of violence in the name of their religion. As such, the NYPD report should not be read to characterize Muslims as intrinsically dangerous or intrinsically leaked to terrorism and that it cannot be a license for racial, religious, or ethnic profiling. Is that clear enough for you? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, the Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award. Michael Savage. Pleased to meet you. Hope you get my day. Oh, yeah. But what's bustling you is the nature of my day. Oh, yeah. Get down in it. I have always believed that immigration is good for America. I believe it today. President Trump. Instead of politicizing and dividing Get America, this bum off my show. Get this bum off my show. Of Get this threat. bum Schumer off my show. Get this bum off my show. This bum pushed the so-called diversity whatever program, diversity visa program, bringing in thousands, 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 many of them from the same city that this piece of human trash came from. Did you know that, old Chucky? See, he just wants the demographics for the vote. That's all. He doesn't believe in immigration. He believes in stuffing the ballot box with those people who will vote D and keep corrupt officials like him, Pelosi, Feinstein. You name the Democrat, you will see why they're in favor of diversity. Years ago, I said diversity is perversity. That was my way to fight it. I used a phrase. I wasn't wrong. It's now a killing perversity. How is it that this piece of human trash, this subhuman in Bellevue Hospital, can be given religious meals, medical care, a Bible, a holy uh, book to pray to? And he tried to kill children on a school bus yesterday as well. How is it that they believe that killing children is justified by their religion? Babies crying. This isn't the first time in Brussels at the airport a few years ago, blood, faces blown off, babies crying. And then the Islamofascists said that all the people of Belgium are soldiers, which is why we attack them. There are no innocent civilians because they're all soldiers, because they're bombing our brethren in our homeland. Now, I won't ask you, the idiots out there who ascribe to liberalism, how a baby can be a soldier, because the mind of an Islamofascist and a liberal is not a rational mind. This is the kind of justification the Nazis used in their blitzkrieg invasion of Poland and the total conquest of Europe. I first coined the phrase Islamofascist many, many years ago. People have used other words such as jihadis and radical Muslims, but they're Islamofascists. They are the new Nazis, the Nazis of our time. But instead of wearing a swastika, instead of marching to a German band, instead of reading Mein Kampf, they are using different music and a different book. To discuss them further invites the kind of analysis that those subhumans don't deserve. After I woke up, actually after I heard about this attack in New York yesterday, I had a very difficult evening. And all I could think of was, you know, I've got to do my job today. I've had other days since those first days of Islamofascist attacks when the terrorists from Tunisia slaughtered scores of innocents in Nice, France, on Bastille Day in 2016. I remember those two horrible days in June. Two different events. Then there was a nightclub shooting in Orlando by Muslims. And then another bombing of an airport in Turkey. Then the assassination of police in Dallas and other cities in July of uh, that year by black racists. The attacks are coming faster and faster. 
and the scenes of carnage on TV are getting worse. And each time I wake up and think, I've got to do my job today. I also think I wish to dear God that Obama was never elected. But that's all I can do. I'm just a man with a microphone. But I know history, and I also know what is going to be done. I know what's going to be done. And I can guarantee you as I'm sitting here writing this that that change I am seeing is occurring. It's a shift from complacency in half of America. The other half, write them off. The Schumers, the Tappers, the Blitzers, write them off. Their brains are so washed, they can never be cleansed. There is a sleeping giant that is awakening in this nation. The sleeping giant who is going to affect this change is the blue-collar white man. The Japanese realized, that after they bom- realized this after they bombed Pearl Harbor. One of the Japanese admirals said, that all they succeeded in doing was to awaken the sleeping giant and fill it with terrible resolve. I used to call those citizens, these proud Americans, the Eddies of the world. It's just a name, a common Christian name, but it embodies that which is the best in us. The Eddies who fought in World War II. The Eddies who put down their saws and ceased to be carpenters or electricians or farmers and went and fought the Nazi Ubermenschen, the supermen, as they called themselves. And every man who defeated that Superman will never forget it. Never forget that every man defeated Superman. And then when Eddie came home from winning World War II, he built the United States into the greatest country on earth in the 1950s. The greatest nation in the history of the world. And then along came the human plagues. The vermin. The shyster William Kunstler. The degenerate Allen Ginsberg. The drug pusher Timothy Leary. The radical feminists who had their own special brand of insanity. Then there were the militant Black Panthers, whom even Martin Luther King Jr. couldn't stand. And this group of evildoers, these left-wing drug peddlers and social peddlers, destroyed the will of America. They twisted the entire American mind. Some people think the twisting started with the beatniks. Go, man, go, huh? With the bongo drums and the beards and the sandals? Well, it didn't. They were basically harmless, reading poetry in coffee houses and on street corners. Even as a kid, I didn't pay much attention to them. But they were right about one thing. It went, man, it went. Those days are over. Goodbye to beatniks and goodbye to socialists and degenerates. Now we have to pick up the pieces because Eddie is still here. Eddie has children. Never forget it. And not all of Eddie's boys became girls. Not all of Eddie's boys went to Harvard. Not all of Eddie's boys went to NYU. Not all of Eddie's girls went to Columbia Law School. Eddie's boys and girls are still in America, and they still have American values. Those people, those blue-collar families, are still the majority. They're still the backbone of this nation. They did not vote when Obama was president and Mittens Romney was given as a choice. But I guaranteed you several books ago that they were going to vote again. And I motivated them to vote, and they voted for Donald Trump. And I said that when that sleeping giant, those former non-participants in the political process, finally elect a new leader, you're going to see a change unlike any you've ever seen in your lifetime, whether you like it or not. I said to you that they will vote because they'll finally realize that the West is being savaged from within by militant Islamists and secularists from the left. I said to you they will vote because if they do not, Christian beliefs will be stamped out and the West will be stamped out along with them. They'll vote because they'll finally understand what John Adams, America's second president, was talking about when he said, our constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. You are hearing loud outcries against Donald Trump and against the the rising forceful eddies of America. You're hearing them described as bigots, racists, anti-women, anti-Semites, homophobic. But those hating voices on the left will eventually dim. These shouters will be reduced to the marginal characters that they've always been. They'll be put back into the holes and boxes they came out of. How do I know this? Because the Eddies will come to our defense one more time. They will stand shoulder to shoulder to honor the legacy of those who built this nation, who fought its wars, who bowed in prayer in a rich variety of faiths, and who raised the families that are the backbone of America. And when they do, I can guarantee you that this nation, that this world, will be a safer place, even for the lunatic fringe who hates the Eddies and the Ediths. I'm Michael Savage. Last night I was watching a Nat Geo documentary done in 2015, I think, about airborne medics in Afghanistan. These are all special forces medics. And I watched them and I looked at their faces 
It was so shocking to see that they were the duplicates of their faces seen in World War II footage. These are the same boys whose fathers landed on the shores of Iwo Jima. These are the same boys whose grandfathers raced up Heartbreak Ridge to kill the Japanese terrorists of the time. These are the same boys, and they're here again. And they are maligned by Wolf Blitzer, Jake Tapper, and the entire left-wing illegitimi. The illegitimi who despise America. The illegitimi who spit on America and celebrate Islam. The illegitimi who will kill us all unless you turn them off and turn America on. You have the choice. You have the power. And I say all power to the people. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Day starting the process of terminating the diversity lottery program. I'm going to ask Congress to immediately initiate work to get rid of this program. Diversity lottery sounds nice. It's not nice. It's not good. It's not good. It hasn't been good. We've been against it. So we want to immediately work with Congress on the diversity lottery program on terminating it, getting rid of it. We want a merit-based program where people come into our country based on merit. Good luck, Donald. You're facing liberals who are insane. They are suicidal. They'd rather put their doxy ahead of their children's safety. They hate you so much. They hate America so much. They are so brainwashed with their red diaper doper baby indoctrination they will fight for more islamic murderers to come in they'd rather see more terrorism than stop another attack another let's put it another way they'd rather stop you and see another attack and see you thwarted do you understand that their agenda is such they'd rather see you thwarted than another terrorist attack stopped now having told you all these things today on the program i'm aware of history and I know that before 9-11, other religious and ethnic groups were responsible for terrorist-related deaths of New Yorkers, more so than any Islamic group. You may not know that. These included the Italian anarchists of the early 20th century. Maybe you heard of Sacco and Vanzetti. Maybe you heard of the Puerto Rican FALN in the 1980s and their murder spree. However, after the 3,000 deaths on 9-11 in New York City as a result of Muslim terrorism, the NYPD decided to act, and act they did. And they knew how to stop terrorism before it started. But then along came de Blasio, along came the New York Civil Liberties Union, along came Linda Sarsour, along came the entire cabal, who said, oh no, this is racism. And they'd rather see people killed like were killed yesterday in New York City than give one inch in their ideological warfare against America. Let's take some calls on the Savage Nation. Tom on WABC Line 4, go ahead, please. Dr. Savage, I'd like to say that, that this country has been hunting, searching, and looking for the enemy. And unfortunately, the enemy is us. Destroying people's countries, borders, language, and culture in the Mideast is... A, I heard the argument before. In other words, they're attacking us because we're attacking them first. Is that your argument? Well... Uh, it seems yes or no? Is that your it, argument? Make it fair. I don't have time to sit here and, and diddle with you. Is that what you're saying? Yes or no? They're attacking us because we're in the Middle East. Is that your main point, Tom? That, well, we've got to stop destroying... I asked you if that's your main point. Answer yes or no. Yes, it is. Yes or no. Is your main point that they would not be here killing us, the infidels, were it not for our intervention in the Middle East? Is that your point? Uh, yeah, that's, that is my point. All right, then do you know anything about history, Tom? Do you know anything about the Muslim murders going back to the beginning? Do you know about the fact that they've been trying to kill or convert people ever since the Quran was dictated by their hero? Well, that do you know that or not? Are you, are you aware of history, my friend? Monster. Do you know about the first crusade? You know the first crusade was a Muslim crusade against Christians? Did you know that? 
Well, I, obviously, I, I don't recall it. I wasn't... How could you recall? When did you ever learn it? But... Well, well, what'd you read, the Daily News and the Forwards Backwards? Stuff. What'd you read, the Forwards Backwards to get your news upside down? Well, I just... Islam, Islam, my friend, has been at war with the world ever since it was created. They will not rest until the entire world is converted to Islam. Are you aware that that is the precept of the entire religion? They didn't get give the Palestinian people a homeland and this stuff opened the bed. What are you talking about the Palestinian people when you just made an idiotic statement that they would not be attacking us as they did in New York yesterday unless we were bombing them in the Middle East? Well, why can't now, they, now you're jumping. Now you're jumping to the Palestinians. Now you're jumping to the Palestinians already. A typical liberal argument. You lose an argument, you jump like a bug to another argument. You had your moment of glory, Tom. It's a shame that you don't know history because you're condemned to repeat it. If anything that I just said is false, show me where it's false. History is pretty clear. Islam has been out to dominate and conquer the entire world from the time it was first created. Ask the Hindus of India what happened to them. Ask the Hindus about their lovely neighbors. They carved off an entire piece of India and they gave it to them. It was called Pakistan. They gave them an entire Muslim nation, which was once a piece of India. Did you know that? And they said, look, you want to kill us. You can't live with us. You don't like our Hindu religion. You call us names. India carved off a piece of land for the Muslims. Was that enough? No. Now the Muslims have been fighting them for 50 years over another region, a mountainous region. They want that too. Never happy. If you look around the world, wherever there's a, uh, an area of strife, it just seems to be Muslims who can't get along with their neighbors. Why is that? Whether it be in Africa or Asia or America, North America, South America, Middle East, wherever you look, it seems to be Muslims who can't get along with their neighbors. Why is that? Is it because the neighbors are wrong? Well, to them they are wrong because the mindset is such that the neighbors shouldn't even be there. There should only be Islam. And that peace will only come to the world when everyone in the world is converted to Islam. Do you understand that this is part of the religion? Do you understand why there must be a ref reformation in Islam? There are many women, by the way, in Islam who have said the same things I am saying. They are totally loyal, faithful Muslim women. They are modern Muslim women, where women are treated worse than garbage in the original religion, less than animals. There are women walking around in London with cages on their faces, I was told last night. That's a religion to you? You didn't know that? Not bad enough they wear a full body covering in order to be uh, uh, sacred. The men make some of the women wear a full metal cage over their face. Did you know that? Not one word. Not one word. Not one word from the American International feminist organizations. Not one word about women being forced to wear cages on their faces. Why is that? Because liberalism is a mental disorder. I have much more to say, including more from the NYPD secret report on how to stop terror before it strikes again. Join the Savage Nation. Call now. 855-400-SAVAGE. 855-400-7282. Savage. Welcome back to the Savage Nation, home of God, faith, and reason, which will be in bookstores next uh, Tuesday. The real God, not the killing God, the God of peace, the God of love, the God that we all seek, not the God that the Salafis seek, the God which says you can kill children, the God that says all opposition to Salafism are all soldiers. No, not that God, the real God, God, Faith, and Reason by Michael Savage. WABC, Mohammed, Line 9, what's on your mind? Mohammed, go ahead, please. Yeah, M Michael, I'm very, uh, I'm very disturbed by the emotional reaction and jumping to conclusions that's taking place. Um, well, excuse me, wait a minute. What, what emotional reactions? What, should we be cool and calm about another Islamo-fascist attack? 
Well, you know, we have we have to understand. We just can't we, we can't just jump to. Well, what, what must we understand that we don't understand that the dead people don't understand and their grieving families don't understand that the amputees don't understand? What don't we understand, Mohammed? Well, I think one of the questions we ha- we have to ask ourselves is why this is happening, and I think I think. Oh, I see. It's because we did something bad. All those bicyclists and walkers were evil. Is that it? Well, I, I didn't say that. All, all I'm saying is that, you know, there, there's Christianity and Judaism in this in this country. Their religion has been accepted. The one religion that hasn't been accepted is Islam. And well, then therefore kill more people than, than it will be accepted. Run over more people. Is that what you're saying? No, I, I think that's what you're saying. What, I, what I'm No, saying, you're saying what? Run over more people and then we'll accept Islam? What I'm saying is people know of, of, of Christmas, they know of Hanukkah. Do they really know about the Muslim religion? I mean, I, I don't want to know about the Muslim religion. How about that? I've had enough of it. Well, then you're going to then Muslims will be dissociated from the culture, and this is what will happen. Oh, I see. Because they're outcasts, that's why they kill. Well, you, I, you mean when all Americans get down on their hands and knees and pray to Allah, then you might stop killing us? What I'm saying is, we need to. Well, what are you saying? Every time I catch you. In one of your logical uh, uh, flaws, you, you say what I'm saying. What are you saying? Well, I, what I'm saying is the Muslim, the Muslim culture, the Muslim religion has certain values. There are certain things in their religion that I think Americans have not accepted. They have not recognized, and I think that leaves them dissociated from from the from the culture. And so, How, why are you justifying the terrorist attack that just occurred? Aren't you ashamed of yourself? No. I, I'm not. I'm not justifying this attack. I, I did not say that. I, what I'm saying is the emotion. The man himself said he did it in the name of Islam. You're saying he didn't. Well, who should I believe, him or you? What? Well, 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 he says he did it in the name of Islam. I, you know, we we can we we cannot we can't argue that point because he said it. I'm not saying that, but he said it. What I'm well, saying, that's what I'm saying. He said he did it in the name of Islam. So how is it that he gets this outmoded? Seventh-century view of Islam. Where did he get it from? Well, it's not that. It's not where did he get it from. It's his interpretation. He has a more strict interpretation. Some Christians have a more strict interpretation. No, no, no! Don't jump in, Christians. Please don't. Don't jump. Don't bundle to make your stupid <laughs> argument. It was not a Christian who ran people over yesterday. I've heard this argument before, and I'll, I'll tell you right now. I'll tell you right now. This is a false argument to keep saying that what happened in Las Vegas was done by a Christian. First of all, what happened in Las Vegas, if that man did it alone, was not done in the name of his God. Do you know that? I, I didn't say he did it in the name of God. All right, so just don't lump the two together and suddenly say Christians do it too. I think what you Muslims must do is have a soul searching and understand that Donald Trump is the only man who's come along who can save us from those amongst you in your group who will kill you and everyone else around them. Mohammed, I assume you're not a terrorist. I mean, is that a, a rational assumption? I, I'm not a terrorist, and I do realize that... So why is it, as a modern man who practices Islam, you are so defensive about those who are throwbacks, who practice a 7th century uh, view of uh, Islam? Why would you defend that? I, I, I'm not defending them more orthodox. Well, thank you. I'm glad. Okay. What we need to do is outlaw Salafism in the United States of America. Write it down. I just said it. See, freedom of religion is not a license to kill in the name of that religion. So you keep hearing the words. You don't know what they mean. This is talk radio. I realize it's not NPR with Vivaldi music. And I realize all of the very sophisticated people in America say things. Oh, I don't listen to AM radio. I only listen to NPR. Well, those of you who might be tuning in for the first time, let me give you a little lesson that you won't get from NPR or Wolf Flitzer, or Jake Tapper, or the other fellow travelers. I have said, and I'll say it again, there are a few sects of Islam, such as that practiced by the piece of human trash who did this yesterday, that must be illegal in the United, made illegal in the United States of America. Religious freedom is not a license to kill. And anyone who uses a religious sect to kill is not practicing a religion, they're practicing a death cult, and that death cult must be banished in America. Salafi. What is Salafi? You've heard about Salafi Islam. It's from the word Salaf, short for Salaf As-Sali, meaning righteous predecessors or pious ancestors. And Salafi is a generic term depicting a Sunni revivalist school of thought that uses the, the so-called pious ancestors of the early period of early Islam as exemplary models. 
So Salafis want to purge Islam of all outside influences. Starting, you're not going to believe this, with the cultures and traditions of contemporary Muslim societies and restore it to that of an imagined 7th century utopia, the so-called caliphate. Many of you don't know what the caliphate means. It is an imagined 7th century utopia. Imagined is the operational word. So they get the lowest, lowest mentality, the inbreeds, amongst their people. People who look like inbreeds, people who look like belong in the back of Barnum and Bailey's freak show from centuries of inbreeding, and they brainwashed them into believing that in the seventh century there was a caliphate that was a utopia for Muslims. It never existed. And the Salafi interpretation of Islam seeks a, quote, pure society which applies the Quran literally and adheres to the social practices and Islamic law, so-called Sharia, which prevailed at the time of the Prophet Muhammad in the seventh century in Arabia. Anyone who practices that is not practicing a religion that is protected by the U.S. Constitution or the First Amendment. They are practicing a death cult. Now, what about a jihadi Salafi? Or what about a takfir? Or what about the other words you may have heard thrown around? They all have meaning, and they're powerful meanings to the most uneducated amongst the opposition that kill us. These are people who are generally illiterate, the murderers. The murderers generally come from the lowest classes of their society. They are uneducated. They're usually very low IQ, borderline feeble-minded. And they can easily be swayed into believing there was a thing called the 7th century caliphate where everything was perfect. And then they're told to kill to make the world like that 7th century caliphate all over again. Unfortunately, for those of you who like to bicycle, dance, smoke pot, go to the movies, watch pornography, sleep with someone of the same sex, you're not included in that 7th century view. You, they would like to kill you. Do you know that? I think I've given you more information in this show that you're going to get for the rest of the week from all the shows put together in the media. And I'm going to back off for a minute. And I'll go back to my main point. The New York Police Department had a very successful anti-terrorism unit. It was called Radicalization in the West, the Homegrown Threat. It was published in 2007. The NYPD was surveying Muslim communities and preventing attacks before they occurred, just as they had done with other ethnic communities in the past. As you heard a caller in the last hour from ABC, he said, uh, during the golden age, if you want to call it that, of the mafia, the police were racially profiling Italians. But law-abiding Italians didn't mind because they knew that there were rotten apples amongst them and they were afraid of the rotten apples. They were glad the NYPD was undercover. They were glad they were watching their social clubs. They were glad that they were monitoring them uh, on the telephone at the time, telephones at that time. They were glad that one day they'd be free of the black hand. And so they supported the NYPD. I assume as I speak to you on the show today, there are many Muslims who are just as glad today that terrorists are being watched and stopped before they can hurt them. And I'll repeat again, more uh, centrist or modern Muslims have been killed in other countries by Muslims than any other force on earth. Just ask Jordanians. If you want to know what a modern Muslim would look like, it would be the King of Jordan or the Queen of Jordan. There are allies in the war against radical Islam. We cannot win this war, though, if we have such a powerful, insane subculture in America, such as civil libertarian liberals who put their doxy of civil liberties above that of survival. Civil liberties are a nicety that you can only afford in a sane, just society. You cannot afford 100% civil liberties, 100% of the civil liberty uh, mentality in a society that has been infiltrated and penetrated by people who are living in another century, who don't listen, live by our laws. And that is what this program is about today. And so you have the New York um, Civil Liberties Union who stopped this program, didn't like it. You had Linda Sarsour, who claimed that the NYPD Demographics Unit was conducting psychological warfare against Muslims. Linda Sarsour is a Palestinian radical. Here she was on April 16th, 2014, on a show called Democracy Now! Listen very carefully to the individuals who are still operational in this nation. Here is 
Linda Sarsour attacking the NYPD for stopping terrorism using a demographic unit. Uh, the demographic unit are, uh, you know, created psychological warfare in our community. You didn't know who you were sitting with at the cafe. You didn't know if someone was asking, you know, what did you, th what do you think about what's happening in Palestine, Israel? If you wanted to even get into a political discussion, um, you know, many people who are in our community are, are fleeing political persecution, and they come from countries where you're not allowed to speak up against the government. You could be arrested. Uh, people talking about, you know, religious leaders recording their sermons, afraid that informants will take them out of context. You know, being at the mosque and not knowing who the person next to you is and thinking they might be an informant. It just really creates psychological warfare in a community, and I think that the disbandment of the zone assessment unit, for me, is definitely a welcomed first step. But it's going to take years to undo the trauma that the American Muslim community has endured under Commissioner Kelly and his intelligence division um, with the help of the CIA. I believe Commissioner Kelly at the time is still around. And I believe Commissioner Kelly, if he's not hired by Donald Trump, should immediately be hired to reestablish this unit in every city in the United States of America and make sure the DHS is trained to think clearly instead of politically. And I think that he needs to look into all of the apologists for the Salafists. He needs to look into all the apologists for those who kill us and would kill us. And we'll leave it at that. My God, the time is just speeding along. I have so little time left on this program to speak with you today to expose the modern-day Mongols and the complacency in this nation, a place that has been decimated by liberalism. And I want to explain to you when I come back how the barbarism of the radical Islamists compares to that of the Mongols. And I will show you that the Mongols did almost exactly what ISIS is doing right now, how they brutally and ruthlessly terrorized their neighbors. The only difference was the Mongols didn't do it in the name of religion. Back in a minute. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. turn to our discussion of what to do about Islamic terror in America in a moment, but look, if you own a used car, the fact of the matter is sooner or later your car is going to break down. You know that every car, truck, and SUV owner knows this. If, it's, if it happens when you're on the warranty, fine. But what happens if the warranty is expired? Well, you, then you're stuck. That's why I tell you to get extended coverage from carshield.com, a new, new engine or tranny, 5000 minimum. A sensor in your car, over 1000 bucks. Skip that. Car Shield makes the whole process easy. You select your favorite mechanic or you even go to the dealership to do the work. And Car Shield gets the mechanic paid directly. Car Shield's administrators even give you the VIP treatment providing 24-7 roadside assistance and a rental car while yours is in the shop so you're not left stranded in the cold. So listen, if your car is 3 to 12 years old, it doesn't mean you have to pay high repair bills. Car Shield administrators have paid out close to $2 billion in claims and they're ready to help you. So save yourself thousands of potential car repairs. Get covered by the ultimate and extended vehicle service protection before it's too late. Call 800-CAR-6100. Mention Savage. Or visit carshield.com, code SAVAGE, and you're going to get 10% off. You heard me? 800-CAR-6100 or carshield.com, code SAVAGE. A deductible may apply. Now, before I end this hour, this is very, very important. I've tried, I've tried to expose the enemy within for 23 years. My first show was in 1994, Borders Language Culture. If you think I'm alone, you're mistaken. Here's a story just came out from the Gateway Pundit. Top imam in New York warned NYC Mayor de Blasio about terror threats he did nothing, ignored. Here is a Muslim imam, a top head guy, Tahiti. He said he warned New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio that his city was a breeding ground for Islamic terrorists. And according to the imam himself... The Sandinista-loving Mayor de Blasio ignored his in-person and online warnings. News of Tawidi's warnings came after the Manhattan terror attack. He believes, just as I believe, that New York City is a breeding ground. And he said, I personally sent letters to de Blasio online, in person, about terrorist breeding ground in New York City. He did nothing. 
In 2016, the imam told Mayor de Blasio that I was in NYC and noticed some hot radical centers. He said he was willing to point out serious cases. Ignored. Not only am I a Muslim imam who understands the threat of Islamic extremism, he said, I also hold a certificate in counterterrorism. Now what? Said Imam Tawidi in a series following the Manhattan terror attack. And de Blasio, the mayor, did nothing. I rest my case. I started this show by saying to you that I have a secret NYPD report that will show that liberals are fellow travelers with terrorists. I have not failed you. I have given you, money's, uh, given you your money's worth and then some. I have given you information that if you take to heart and take to mind, can save this country from another terror attack. We have Muslims who agree with us. Unfortunately, we have too many who do not agree with us. Those who put their liberal doxy ahead of our own survival. It is going to take a strong person, a strong man, to do what needs to be done in this country to save us. And you will hear outcries every step of the way. You will hear the Schumers. You will hear the Blitzers. You will hear the Woodpeckers. You will hear all of the others screaming about civil liberties and the other niceties that can only apply in a civil society. Things that cannot apply when the enemy has invaded and penetrated every avenue of this nation. Michael Savage, the author of God, Faith, and Reason. Only God can save us from the forces of evil. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, Psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation, home of borders, language, culture. And here he is, winner of the National Radio Hall of Fame Award, Michael Savage. Welcome back to the uh, Savage Nation. I guess we could talk about religion if you want. And the weird confluence of radical Islam and radical liberalism, which I've done for two straight hours in 23 years. But I don't think I will do that. Instead, I will focus you on the fact that there are Muslims who agree with me 100%, and they are faithful to their religion, and they try to warn so-called progressives like de Blasio, and they were, they were ignored. Just as I am ignored by television, they are ignored by the politicians. This came out on the Gateway Pundit by Joshua Kaplan. Top imam warned New York City Mayor de Blasio about terror threats, and he did nothing ignored. He tried his best. He warned de Blasio that New York was a breeding ground for Islamic terrorists. According to the imam, de Blasio ignored him. And this came to us after the Manhattan terror attack. And he just was begging de Blasio to do something about what he called the terrorist breeding ground in NYC. He did nothing. And he, he concluded his emails, the imam did. He said, not only am I a Muslim imam who understands the threat of Islamic extremism, I also hold a certificate in counterterrorism. Now what? De Blasio, the Sandinista-loving mayor, did nothing. The imam went on to blast de Blasio and Sadiq Khan, the mayor of London. Here's what he said. De Blasio grieves about London and you grieve about New York City? How about you both swap positions since you don't really care about your own people? That's pretty well put. And we know mel multiple people were run over yesterday after a Muslim psychotic ran people over, screaming Allah Akbar after he was uh, captured. The killer is now enjoying all the benefits of the society he hates getting a holy meal, a halal meal in Bellevue Hospital, because after all, if he ate some contaminated American food, it would be against his belief system, his 7th century belief system. And so because of the twisted laws of America, we have to give him a religious meal. He also gets to study the Bible that he takes literally. He rereads it, the illiterate 
murderer in the Bellevue Hospital right now who did this, reads his Bible cover to cover, word for word, line by line, the way psychotic liberals read the San Francisco Chronicle, and he believes every word, and he takes every word literally, and he believes in the 7th century there was a perfectly pure society, and he believes that that caliphate can be restored if only you, the infidel, were either killed or converted to Islam, which is why he believes running over innocent people, as he did yesterday, is justified. And there are justifiers listening to this program who have been calling now saying that, yeah, well, because we're in the Middle East and we bomb them, that's why they do this. This shows you how far this country has fallen, both in self-respect and in survival. And I have to remind people that Islam has been at war with the world since the 7th century. That's not an invented statement. It's a fact. Every educated Muslim knows that. Ever since the 7th century, some have gone out to conquer and kill, convert. Nothing's changed. I've been trying to warn you now for how many years? Borders, language, culture. Borders, language, culture. Borders, language, culture. And now the last book in the series is right here. I'm looking for something in the book that relates to this in God, Faith, and Reason. And I can't really find it because this book is not political. I have a thing on how revolutionaries kill God, but I don't think that relates to this, does it? Does it or not? I don't know if it relates to it or not. Do we need God to save us? We need faith to save us? No, I think we need freedom, uh, reason to save us. See, I don't think that we need God, per se, to save us. If you were to say, why would God let this, things like this happen? Those who lost limbs and lives yesterday. The men and boys who come back from Afghanistan and Iraq and the other hell holes on the planet trying to save us from the deluge of Salafism. Those who have been blown up with IEDs. Those who've lost limbs or those who've lost lives. The grieving widows, they know what this war is about. They've been on the front lines. They've seen what they do to their own people. They know what it's about. But do you know what it's about? Those of you who live in a dream world created by men greater than all of us. Those lying in veteran cemeteries around this country. You know about those heroes? Those who were spit upon by the leftists in this country? The same leftists who spit upon the returning Vietnam veterans are now running cities, states, running departments in the federal government. Did you know that? They are now the top dogs, those who spat at our soldiers as they came back from Vietnam. They are now top dogs in so many intelligence and police agencies. You wouldn't know that, would you? Well, that's the battle that we're facing. And the battle is really the battle of uh, the enemy within defeating the enemy within. Now, if you've been listening to me since the beginning of this show, which was two hours and ten minutes ago, you'll notice that there's a change in mood, pace. That's right. The doctor warned me to slow down. He said, your heart is beating too fast. It's the doctor within. I have no doctor outside of myself. The doctor within said, Michael, slow down. This is too much for any one man to do on his own. You've been doing it for 23 years. Since 1992, you've been trying to warn America to wake up to its own borders, language, and culture. You helped elect the president, and now you've got the enemies within, the fellow travelers, trying to undo this entire revolution that occurred at the ballot box. What are we going to do about it? Here are more deaths directly related to the liberal judges, the liberal politicians like Schumer who created this diversity lottery, and they're in denial about it. They're in denial that their own policies are the policies that are destroying us. Even when they're hit in the face with a murder like the murder, a series of murders like this. Now, how sensitive do you really want to be? How pure do you really want to be is the question. How much can you really take? What must it take for you to understand that they have been at war with you for a long period of time and that there is only one solution to this problem? And I think I've spelled out what the solutions are. I mean, I'll make it very simple for you. We know that he's, Donald Trump's going to try and go to Congress, God help him, to eliminate the diversity visa program created by Charles Schumer. Wait until you hear the arguments. Wait until you hear the self-righteous phonies get up and talk about diversity and bigotry. You wait and see what happens. You wait and see what happens when the self-righteous phonies get up and scream that Trump is a bigot for trying to save America from the next wave of killers. So I don't know that we're ever going to save ourselves. I think democracy itself is the problem. 
I think that our form of democracy has been so misinterpreted and so perverted that we cannot survive if this goes on much longer. But that's a topic for maybe an entire other subject another day. I don't even want to go there right now. It's too dark. We know this. We know that there are other people involved with this, this um, sack of garbage, this sack of human offal in Bellevue Hospital. We know that he's laughing in the hospital, according to eyewitnesses. We know that the sack of offal who ran people over yesterday is enjoying his stay at your expense in Bellevue Hospital in New York, getting the best of medical care from the infidels that he tried to kill. Did you know that? He's laughing. He's very satisfied with what he did and that we're actually giving him the best medical care the world can provide while there are veterans still rotting in the back of VA hospitals. Did you know about that? Look, there's so much on my mind. It's so much hard, so hard to constrain myself from what I really want to say. If you think I've actually said what I want to say today, then you don't know me. You would have had to hear me before the show in the halls of the radio studio muttering to myself of what really must be done. But I share that with you. I'm not going to sell it, say it publicly, but I share those feelings with you because I know that they're not uncommon. I know that most American men who are not drugged uh, and not hypnotized or paralyzed thinking the same thing of what must be done to save themselves in the society. They know what must be done. And they're actually waiting for the signal to do it. That's as far as I'll go right now. We want the government to do it. And unless the government does it, the people will do it. I'm telling you right now. If the government does not protect the people, the people will protect themselves. We're the most armed nation on the planet, thank God. Second Amendment, only thing that keeps us from becoming total serfs. The only thing that prevents a total and absolute domination of every Eddie and Edith in this nation is the Second Amendment. Make no mistake about it. I could also add one little footnote, which is that had she won, the woman of no name, right now we would not be enjoying the First Amendment, uh, the First Amendment freedoms that I have, and the Second Amendment would be under assault. That's all I can say to you. If she, of unnamed, no name, she had won. The phone number, if you care to join the conversation, is 855-407-2828, 855-407-SAVAGE. The uh, website is michaelsavage.com. I told you I have one of the only copies of the NYPD demographics unit that was uncoupled in 2007 by the New York Civil Liberties Union, and we had sound bites from Linda Sarsour, a Palestinian radical, who said that it was psychological warfare against Muslims, but you did not yet hear, and you're going to enjoy it now, a tape that no one else in radio has, thanks to uh, Robert and Jim, my able staff. We have a tape from 2014, I believe, from the New York Civil Liberties Union, lawyer Martin Stolar, who was complaining that the NYPD tracked Muslims and followed them where they ate, slept, played, and prayed. And he worked around the clock, Martin Stolar did, in order to make sure the NYPD could not do their job. Listen to him boasting in, tr in clip 25 on the Savage Nation. The guidelines got substantially watered down um, that made investigations easier to do, and it took away the outside civilian. Really? Um, mm. That was the authority from now on in order to conduct investigations where there had to be a little bit of a piece of paper, some kind of a, a reason. It had to be approved internally within the police department, which gives them license to do anything they want to do. Well, obviously, we found out eight years later that, of course, they took the license and ran rampant with it, and they were, they were conducting surveillance of the Muslim community. Um, every single Muslim in the world was a potential terrorist. Um, they were tracking where, where Muslims ate, slept, played, prayed. Uh, mosques were infiltrated. There were undercover agents in the community. All this came out, and we said, hey, wait a minute, there's something wrong here. Listen, Martin, there's something wrong with you. You are what was known in World War II by a name that begins with a J and ends with a T. There's something wrong with you, Martin. Your psychosis is what caused that attack yesterday, in my opinion. It was the New York Civil Liberties Union that prevented the NYPD from stopping just such an attack as yesterday in New York. And God knows what attack tomorrow in San Francisco. It is the psychosis of the radical liberal that will kill you and your family in long term unless we fight them tooth and claw every step of the way. And we, and we do not let these red diaper doper babies get away with murder because that's what they're getting away with. You hear how quietly and rationally he sounds as though he's speaking, how reasonably? 
how very NPR it sounds. No anger in the voice, no rage in the voice, no emotion in the voice. In other words, he doesn't sound like me, does he? Well, let you decide what must be done. Many of you are so stupid, brainwashed, paralyzed with your life that you don't even care what's done. You don't care as long as it doesn't hit you. Fires are over in Sonoma, Napa, they never happened. The murders happened in Las Vegas. Nothing matches with the story. We don't care anymore. We've gone past it. Another Muslim not sh- who never should have been here to begin with, let in because of Charles Schumer, runs people over and gloats about it, laughs about it, tells jokes about it in the hospital. No one cares anymore because they didn't get run over by the car. So what's the answer? I'll let you figure it out. You can call me at 855-407-282 if you care to tell every, everyone else. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. eye for an eye, an eye for an eye, an eye for an eye. You've all heard that phrase, but you don't even know where it comes from. You vaguely remember it comes from the uh, Old Testament. Well, I know where it comes from. It comes from Exodus. But if any harm follow, then thou shalt give life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burning for burning, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. Exodus, Exodus 21, 23 to 25. That's in the Old Testament. It's on page 93 of God, Faith, and Reason in the, in a kind of, they're inserted. The biblical statements are inserted in the middle of my text to show you where it comes from. And I wrote an eye for an eye on page 91 of God, Faith, and Reason as follows. One page, I'll read you two paragraphs. Exodus contains all sorts of rules about an eye for an eye. We don't live in an eye for an eye world, and many of us feel that the justice system is flawed because punishments don't fit the crimes. It seems to most of us that the true criminals are not punished sufficiently. Well, what does the Bible mean? I mean, we don't want to live in that world, do we? An eye for an eye? Do we want to live in such a world? No, we don't, I write. Do we want to live in Saudi Arabia where they cut the hands off thieves? Some of us would say yes. I would say no. On the other hand, when we live in a world that is ruled by liberal judges, where the courts are run by liberal lawyers, where there does not seem to be much punishment for some crimes, we are all asking ourselves how we can make the pendulum swing to a more equitable justice system. That's my interpretation of Exodus and where we are today. But if any harm follow, then thou shalt give life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hands, foot for foot, burning for burning, wound for wound, stripe for stripe, Exodus 21. If you want to see other biblical quotes as they relate to the narrative of the modern world in my book you can do so immediately by ordering it at amazon.com or barnesandnoble.com or on november 14th you can go into a bookstore and walk out with the billboard where the word god will be seen in the workplace in nice gold letters you'll put the book god faith and reason on your workplace desk with my smiling face with my striped purple shirt And all it will say is God, Faith, and Reason by Michael Savage. And then we will see what the fair-minded liberals who believe in freedom of the press and freedom of the speech have to say when you place my book on your workplace or when you carry the book on a subway or on a bus. See see all the God-loving people around you. See what the witches and the warlocks, see what the Wiccans and the evildoers say to you. God, Faith, and Reason may become... Who knows, it could be banned in America for all I know. I know it's been banned on CNN, ABC, CBS, NBC. I know it's been banned already. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. New York Police Department program 
that clearly shows collusion between the civil liberties groups and the terrorists. I promised that on my website, michaelsavage.com. I promised it on my Twitter feed, at a savage nation. Now, before that, I posted the following statement. Look at the garbage coming into our nation. They kill us, and psycho libs apologize for their murder sprees. Close the borders. Now, most people agree with me. Some of them are stupid appeasers, brainwashed children who went to uh, colleges here and were told we're picking on Muslims. Well, then ask the Muslims who were killed by the fanatical Muslims if we're picking on Muslims. Ask the Israelis if we're picking on Muslims. Ask the Russians if we're picking on Muslims. Ask the Hindus if we're picking on Muslims. Ask the Buddhists if we're picking on Muslims. You people are so stupid that you have put your political ideology ahead of your own survival. In that sense, you are suicidal. And I will not listen to suicidal people directing my policies in this nation anymore. I've had enough of it, and I hope you had enough of it. This piece of garbage was radicalized right here in America in one of his mosques. What, did he pick it up on the Internet? Yeah, that's what we're hearing from de Blasio. He picked it up on the Internet. No, he didn't pick it up on the Internet. <clears throat> Have you gone in and listened to the mumbo-jumbo in some of these radical mosques? What do they say? They love America? Have you looked into some of the mosques, de Blasio, before you opened your big double-talking mouth? Trump can save us. And we've got to help Trump save us. We've got to restore the NYPD unit as quickly as possible. I'm going to read you a piece from this secretive report that is now gone. It was purged by the, America, the uh, New York Civil Liberties Union. I have the report, Radicalization in the West, the Homegrown Threat, Copyright 2007, New York City Police Department, All Rights Reserved. Prepared by Mitchell D. Silber, Arvin Batt, Senior Intelligence Analyst, NYPD Intelligence Division. I linked to this three books ago. You see, my books are a serial. They're not really separate from each other. I referenced this report in, in my book, Scorched Earth. Scorched Earth, Restoring the Country After Obama. Then came other books, which were like a continuation of this long attempt to awaken America before it is too late. Trump's war followed that one. I thought we could save America with Donald Trump. But I warned you that the fellow travelers in this country, I warned you that the deep state, the liberals, the Republicans would undermine our agenda. Remember, Trump is not the issue. Our agenda of borders, language, culture, the American way, that's the issue. And when they attack Trump for things he has not done, blaming him for everything from hurricanes to Martians landing in Patterson, New Jersey, they are insane. Liberalism is a mental disorder. Maybe you idiot liberals in Manhattan will finally open your ears to reality instead of calling me names, instead of castigating Michael Savage as some right-wing evildoer. You may come to understand, as you see your loved ones in morgues or in the hospital, while a piece of human trash that did it is laughing in Bellevue Hospital, maybe you foolish liberals will open up your eyes to the fact that you are digging your own graves. They're laughing at you, you fools. You see the men, the quote men up there in New York, giving their press conference with their hands in front of their, their bellies, standing there like the stooges that they are. The fools with Mayor de Blasio, the phony, standing there, all standing there looking like uh, morticians with nothing to say, all sweeping it under the rug, what they just did. Now, I have a report, instead of talking in generics, I'll be very specific for you, that was put together by the NYPD a number of years ago that shows that liberals are fellow travelers with Islamic terrorists. I will also show you definitively that Muslim lawyers have penetrated the civil liberties unions and many other intelligence agencies in this nation. I will prove it to you. This is not just hot air or rhetoric. And I will tell you right now, once again, this is the worst terrorist attack in New York City since 9-11. And if you stupid, party-going liberals of New York want to commit suicide, well, go ahead. But don't tell me I didn't warn you. And don't tell me I didn't tell you how to stop the next Muslim from killing you. I know I said the word I'm not supposed to say, but I'll say it until you finally hear it, until it comes out of your stupid ears. You've been so brainwashed, the only way to unwash your brain is by washing it out with soap. There's a New York Times story from April 15th, 2014, headlined as follows, written by Matt Apuzo, and Joseph Goldstein. 
And the title of the article is this. New York drops unit that spied on Muslims. Now, the reason I was able to find this story is because I actually was one of the only commentators in America who learned of the NYPD unit, a secretive unit, by the way, that sent plainclothes detectives into Muslim neighborhoods and the cops eavesdropped on conversations and built detailed files on where these Muslims ate, prayed, and shopped. And yet the program was shut down by William J. Bratton. That's right, William J. Bratton, the department's commissioner at the time, backed the department away from some of the post-9-11 intelligence gathering practices of his predecessor. Now, why did William Bratton and the mayor of that time and Obama at that time and the liberal fellow travelers, the snakes, the devils, why did they sue the NYPD? Why did so-called civil rights groups and why did a so-called senior official with the FBI work to undo this New York unit that spied on Muslims? I'll let you figure out the answer to that one as quickly as you can. To many Muslims, they say the squad, known as the Demographics Unit, was a sign that the police viewed their every action with suspicion. Uh, duh. You see, the, U the U.S., uh, the New York police mapped communities inside and outside New York City. That would have included Patterson, New Jersey, why the, where this piece of subhuman trash resided with his wife and children, who, by the way, I would deport. I'd throw them out of the country. Don't you tell me that the wife's not poisoned. Don't tell me the children aren't little jihadis waiting to run your daughter over when they grow up and can drive a car. Don't tell me that. But the uh, FBI had a fellow traveler in there. The police department had fellow travelers in there. The mayor's unit had fellow travelers in there. William J. Bratton was a fellow traveler. So he undid this incredible unit that stopped terror in its tracks. Linda Sarsour, you ever hear of her? You know who she is? The Palestinian-American who runs the Arab American Association of New York. I'll let you figure out what I think should be done with the Arab American Association of New York, but I'll leave that for another show. Linda Sarsour said this at the time. The demographics unit created psychological warfare in our community, said Linda Sarsour, of the Arab American Association of New York. Those documents, they showed where we live. That's the cafe where I eat. That's where I pray. That's where I buy my groceries. They were able to see their entire lives on those maps, and it completely messed with the psyche of our community. Yes, Linda, it was supposed to mess with the psyche of the terrorist, Linda. Ms. Sarsour was one of several advocates who met last Wednesday with Mr. William J. Bratton and some of his senior NYPD staff at police headquarters. She and others in attendance said the department's new intelligence chief, John Miller, who is still there, by the way, told them that the police did not need to work covertly to find out where Muslims gather and indicated the department was shutting down a unit. They were the ones who would chat up the employees at Muslim-owned businesses. They would gauge sentiment about America and foreign policy. And by using maps and photographs, the police noted where Albanian men played chess in the afternoon, where Egyptians watched soccer, and where South Asians, so-called, played cricket. That's what the police were doing. It was called intelligent, preventive police work. But you see, the New York Civil Liberties Union had a man named Mr. Stolar. Does the name ring a bell? Martin Stolar, the civil rights lawyer. Martin Stolar, a red diaper doper baby from the get-go, in my opinion, was one of the first lawyers who brought a claim against the NYPD. And he said that the post-9-11 surveillance programs violate the court order in that case. Joining the Muslim community, Mr. Stolar worked with the Muslim community to undo this amazing surveillance program. But who else is responsible? Why, it's none other than that tall, phony Mr. de Blasio. Mr. de Blasio said in a statement at the time that the closing of the NYPD unit was, quote, a critical step forward in easing tensions between the police and the communities they serve so that our cops and our citizens can help one another 
Go after the real bad guys. They ought to go after you, de Blasio. They should have gone after you the day you were inaugurated. You are the worst curse that ever hit New York City. You are standing up there today like you care about Muslim terrorism? I don't think so, de Blasio. We're going to sit here and wring our hands while they're laughing at us? While that piece of human trash who ran those people over yesterday is laughing in Bellevue Hospital, celebrating what he did, that piece of garbage? And you're sitting here telling me he has civil rights? And he was treated in Bellevue Hospital the same way uh, a president or a mayor, God forbid, would, would be treated by the best medicine in the world? I wouldn't have given him that treatment. But then I'm not in charge of anything. I'm only a talk show host. I really shouldn't get that excited. Not only am I only a talk show host, I'm not even an unknown talk show host. I only have 20 million listeners according to the recent, the recent data, which shows streaming data, radio data, radio station data, websites, Twitter, Facebook. But what does 20 million people amount, amount to when you have Wolf Blitzer? When you have Jake Tapper, you're not going to believe what this fellow traveler You'll never believe what Jake Tapper said last night. How many years have I been telling you these people are not mentally ill, in my estimation? They're far worse than mentally ill. With the New York Civil Liberties Union and uh, Arab American and other Muslim fellow travelers, this program of the NYPD, the best in the country, which stopped terrorists before they acted, using their priority list of demographic analysis, to stop the attacks before they occurred. But this uh, report is worth looking at in detail. I cannot give you the whole detail about radicalization in the West, pre-radicalization, self-identification, indoctrination, jihadization. I can't give that to you. I can just summarize it. We know about all the attacks that they have conducted in the name of Allah. And I know about all of the sensitivities out there taught by the law schools about uh, the Fourth Amendment, due process. I know it because I grew up with liberals. I know how liberals think. I know they're suicidal. At the, at the end of the day, they're suicidal. Look at their lifestyles. And what's their statement? That, what's the statement libs used to make? I used to hear it all the time. I couldn't believe that they would say a thing like that. I would hear the self-righteous New York liberals say, I'd rather see 99 guilty people go free then one innocent man be arrested. Right, Bernie? Bernie Sanders? I'd rather see 99 guilty people go free than one innocent Muslim arrested. Would you now? I'd rather see 99 innocent people detained to prevent that one person from running people over in New York City, Bernie. I'll be right back. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. There's a sleeping giant that is awakening in this nation. The sleeping giant who is going to affect this change is the blue-collar white man. The Japanese realized that after they bombed, realized this after they bombed Pearl Harbor. One of the Japanese admirals said that all they succeeded in doing was to awaken the sleeping giant and fill it with terrible resolve. I used to call those citizens, these proud Americans, the Eddies of the world. It's just a name, a common Christian name, but it embodies that which is the best in us. The Eddies who fought in World War II. The Eddies who put down their saws and ceased to be carpenters or electricians or farmers and went and fought the Nazi Ubermenschen, the supermen, as they called themselves. And every man who defeated that superman will never forget it. Never forget that every man defeated Superman. And then when Eddie came home from winning World War II, he built the United States into the greatest country on earth in the 1950s. The greatest nation in the history of the world. And then along came the human plagues. The vermin, the shyster William Kunstler, the degenerate Allen Ginsberg, the drug pusher Timothy Leary, the radical feminists who had their own special brand of insanity. Then there were the militant Black Panthers, whom even Martin Luther King Jr. couldn't stand. And this group of evildoers, these left-wing drug peddlers and social peddlers, destroyed the will of America. They twisted the entire American mind. Some people think the twisting started with the beatniks. Go, man, go, huh? With the bongo drums and the beards and the sandals. 
Well, it didn't. They were basically harmless, reading poetry in coffee houses and on street corners. Even as a kid, I didn't pay much attention to them. But they were right about one thing. It went, man, it went. Those days are over. Goodbye to beatniks and goodbye to socialists and degenerates. Now we have to pick up the pieces because Eddie is still here. Eddie has children, never forget it. And not all of Eddie's boys became girls. Not all of Eddie's boys went to Harvard. Not all of Eddie's boys went to NYU. Not all of Eddie's girls went to Columbia Law School. Eddie's boys and girls are still in America, and they still have American values. Those people, those blue-collar families, are still the majority. They're still the backbone of this nation. They did not vote when Obama was president and Mittens Romney was given as a choice. But I guaranteed you several books ago that they were going to vote again. And I motivated them to vote, and they voted for Donald Trump. And I said that when that sleeping giant, those former non-participants in the political process, finally elect a new leader, you're going to see a change unlike any you've ever seen in your lifetime, whether you like it or not. I said to you that they will vote because they'll finally realize that the West is being savaged from within by militant Islamists and secularists from the left. I said to you they will vote because if they do not, Christian beliefs will be stamped out and the West will be stamped out along with them. They'll vote because they'll finally understand what John Adams, America's second president, was talking about when he said, our Constitution was made only for a moral and religious people. It is wholly inadequate to the government of any other. You are hearing loud outcries against Donald Trump and against the, the rising forceful eddies of America. You're hearing them described as bigots, racists, anti-women, anti-Semites, homophobic. But those hating voices on the left will eventually dim. These shouters will be reduced to the marginal characters that they've always been. They'll be put back into the holes and boxes they came out of. How do I know this? Because the eddies will come to our defense one more time. They will stand shoulder to shoulder to honor the legacy of those who built this nation, who fought its wars, who bowed in prayer in a rich variety of faiths, and who raised the families that are the backbone of America. And when they do, I can guarantee you that this nation, that this world, will be a safer place, even for the lunatic fringe who hates the Eddies and the Ediths. Savage.